Hey, hey, I'm David. This is Vanessa. Hello. <laughs> and this is Creative <laughs> Differences in the house. Police or ambulance? I can't tell the difference. Police. Sorry about your turn. This is ridiculous. Can you hurry up, please? I'm sorry, Your Highness, but we haven't finished yet. Come on, what's your best price? I'm so sorry. You know what they say, if you have to ask for the price, you definitely can't afford it. Is there any chance you could let someone else check in? I just want to make a decision for myself. OK. This is the situation. There's a very small risk. Your baby's heart might not develop properly. Some mothers decide not to take that risk. But your baby's also dependent on you remaining stable right now. So, um, Vanessa, you first of all, do you prefer actor or actress? Oh, honestly, I, I, <laughs> I just want the work. <laughs> um, uh, actress, I'm female. Actress is fine. Cool. OK, in... so you yeah. are an actress. Writer, director, producer, and casting director. Is is that is that right? Well, casting director only loosely, in that I've only ever done one other project that wasn't my own, okay. um, and then I just cast my own. So it, it, it's on there on IMDb just because it goes up because that was my credit. But um, I love casting, but but mainly um, actor, uh, and then more recently writer, director, producer. Yes. But you have cast other people's work, so you, you're, you've yeah. built X. How, how? So okay, so you cast your own first, and then someone said, "Would you come and do mine?" Yes, basically. <laughs> were, were you just like, "Yep, yeah, no problem," or were you? Oh, yes. yes. In fact, I was doing. It was something called Meet the Nativity, which was a comedy web series, which was a while ago, and. Um, Actually, I was in it. I, I hit the writer had cast. Were you in it before in. you became casting director? I was but... in it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I was also doing some script consulting on it, some script editing with with him as well. And then, basically, because I know lots of very good actors, um, he was like, "Do you want to cast it?" And I was like, "Yes, I'd love to do that because I love looking at characters. I love looking at and and matching up." you know, what might possibly work, thinking outside the box a bit and all that sort of thing. And, I, and, it, and in fact, I knew exactly the right actors immediately. It was very easy, so I just went to them, yes. But I loved casting, yes. Uh -huh. but did, did that give you an insight into when you go for auditions yourself for commercials and films and things? Do you well, sort of think to yourself, what would I look for? Or Yes. Maybe? Well, it's really interesting, because when I cast my own stuff, I never, I, I never ask actors to audition. Um, well, mainly, well, all, partly because, you know, they're all collaborations, so it feels like a bit of a cheek. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you want to do, like, six monologues for me, and I'll just have a think about that. So um, Everyone does that. Do a different six. Yeah, I know. Everyone does the one from, like, your talking heads or whatever it is. So, <laughs> so basically, I, I look for actors that I, I've, I love the vibe of. You know, I think that's really important on set is checking all these people together for quite a long time not only they don't just have to be good actors they have to be good actors that produce that magic together and that are really going to make the whole thing sing and sizzle yeah. so um that's that's i look for that very much when i'm casting when i'm casting it's really obvious within about 10 seconds of a showreel if anyone can act or not right. if i'm if i'm leaning in after 10 seconds then then that's it and i don't need to see exactly the character on your showreel I just need to get a feel for the heartbeat of who you are as an actor and, okay. and whether you me lean in. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay. 
Um, so the, the, the uh, back to the the other stuff. The acting came first, mm. did it? Uh, how does yes. that lead into the other stuff then? Well, mainly because um, so I, I blacked my way into acting with absolutely no um, training whatsoever. Okay, how and, did that happen? Um, Tell us more. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a teacher, really. By that's the training I've got. <laughs> I'm okay. a primary school teacher and a music specialist. So um, I did that for a while. And I'd always wanted to be an actor. And then I thought, well, that's daft because that's a stupid job, <laughs> which it is. <laughs> it's no it's one, the best you know, job, though. <laughs> it's amazing, but it's really, it's really unstable. And yeah. you never, you know, so I thought I'll go for something a bit, you know, more guaranteed of actual money every month. Mm, yeah. So I went into teaching, which I love. Then I had my kids. And then I didn't want to go back into teaching. So I started working as an extra. Um, I just joined some agencies. I was in Bristol at the time. I did loads of extra work, loads, casualty, Doctor Who, hot, you know, all of those nice. when they were being filmed in Bristol. And I got to the point where I was getting, you know, they were saying, oh, get Vanessa to do this line. So I'd become, you know, what's called a featured extra because I could do a line without worrying about who I was saying the line to because they were famous or whatever, you know, I, was, I didn't care. I just loved doing the lines. So I thought, do you know what? I reckon I could do probably more than one line <laughs> and be okay. <laughs> so I started doing um, freebie, you know, student shorts and stuff, got a showreel together, sent it to, my, sent it to an agent. Um, they took me on and that was kind of it really. And I was lucky that they wanted someone that had my look and that was my age. I was a bit older because, I, you know, I was 30, I think then. So maybe 35. No, I must have been older than that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not doing a match on that. That's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> and it just kind of grew. It just kind of grew from there. And I've only ever done screen acting. Right. Um, and then what happened when I hit sort of 45, 45 or something like that, the, the parts just kind of get really weird because you're no longer the attractive wife. Right. Um, and you're not old enough to be the kind of, you know, the old grandmother. <laughs> you're just kind of lost in this kind of wasteland of like, what, you know, what, what, could, she, what could she possibly be between 45 and 80? I don't know. <laughs> um, what do women do? You know, just knit, right? So um, I decided to write something, which was seeing him. And then yeah. after seeing him, I just fell into directing the next one and then the next one and then the next one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and yeah. Do you do you prefer directing your own stuff, or do you prefer letting someone else direct your stuff? No one else has ever directed. Oh no, that's not true. So seeing him, seeing him. Oh gosh. So seeing him, I got through quite a lot of directors on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a that was a real baptism of fire and a real learning curve for me as to what I needed in a director. And um, so I was very lucky when I finally got Chris Jones who came on board, who basically took a half shot film and then shot the other half of it and put it together. And I don't think you really noticed that part, half of it was shot in April and half of it was shot in November and I'm half a stone heavier, <laughs> squeezing into that little white dress. Um, so yeah, you can't, you can't really tell. And it was a completely different crew. Um, I rewrote the script. Um, it, it was a completely different kettle of fish. And so that was a real learning curve for me. And I thought, well, maybe rather than going through five directors next time, <laughs> I could just maybe try, you know, how hard could it be? Uh, quite hard, it turns out. <laughs> I, 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 I wrote this script, bus stop, and I showed it to my husband and he said, you should make that. And I said, well, I don't want to make another film again. I was just, I just ha wrote it by accident. And, but I did, I ended up having a bash at directing it because it was only me and two other actors. So it was fairly straightforward, one setup. And then I got the bug. I just love, because I love actors. I love stories. I just got the bug then. Mm. So do you prefer, which, which do you prefer? Acting, writing or directing? Or All producing? of it. Oh no, not producing. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's a, that's a necessary evil. <laughs> uh, 
producing is thankless, right? I mean, uh -huh. oh, no, finding the money. Ah! So and hanging on to it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't enjoy that. Um, I think writing is really hard because I never like what I write. I never like my acting either. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm the same with my, with my acting. I'm, yeah, I can't. I, I, when I first yeah. started, I used to enjoy watching myself because it was like it was a novelty. But yeah. now Ooh. I'm just like, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Why, 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 why? You know? No, right. In, in my head, I was so much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why can't they put what's on here, in here, on there? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I know, I know, but and I, but so I so, so I think I love all of it for different reasons and in different ways because I love story and I think there's a process for acting. It's becoming the person in the story. With directing, it's it's bringing the story to life. With writing, it's like, oh, what's the story? <laughs> mm. um, but it's just different ways of telling the story. And I love working with people. So right. anywhere I am where I can work with other, you know, other amazing people, with amazing people, <laughs> uh, I came out wrong, with, with uh, amazing people, it gets, gets me excited and I just... I love it, yeah. So all of them equally for different reasons. Okay, so so gun to your head, you wouldn't be able to make a decision. If someone said, if, if you if you were filling out a form and you had mm. you could only put one job description, I mean you you'd probably put filmmaker, wouldn't you? It covers everything, really. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, it. like it, yeah. I think I think I think um, writing helps me to have stuff to make. But probably it's my least favorite thing because I I I don't think it's that great. Okay. <laughs> but, but but the the, the director the directing the acting would maybe be the one I I'd be less able to let go of. But then on the other hand, it's been all my own writing that's been made into films. So what do I know? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love them all. No, that's fair, fair enough. Um, right, uh, with with the writing, mm. um, do you is is do you have a running theme? Through in your head, or do well, you know what what you feel? Well, it seems to be death so far. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say communication, but yeah, yeah. It, it's lots of things. It's lots of things. Communication. I think humans is the thing, which seems like a weird thing to say, but I think human stories. Mm. But any genre. I mean, I, I, you know, I love comedy. I adore comedy. Um, so I've written a short that's called Stuck, which is a romantic comedy. Okay. It's a bit off It's a bit quirky. That's the next one I want to to make, so that no and no one dies in it. No one cries. <laughs> 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 and and, and I, I'll hopefully, fingers crossed, be acting in it. But so so seeing him is about. Uh, loss and not being able to come to terms with loss which weirdly yeah. I wrote before I'd experienced any loss myself okay. in the process of making the film I lost both my parents and oh. um, by the time I got to the, uh, the end of the film um, yeah all of that was really like quite you know I was working quite hard to make sure I got that I got that right yeah. um, and then bus stop um, turned out to be about loss as well <laughs> But I didn't know that when I started writing it. So I genuinely, Bus Stop was a really weird one because I wasn't going to make another film because seeing him was such hard work right. for so many reasons, not least because I had you just lost everyone I loved nearly in, in the process of it. Um, so I just couldn't sleep one night and I just got up and I thought, I'm just going to onto a page, uh, a, a literal page. Not No, because I'm 51, right? So I only do pencils. That's very um, Fair enough, right? Hieroglyphics. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I started, I, I basically got a female character and a male character, and I put them somewhere where I thought they, you know, they can't escape from, and they started talking to each other, and I genuinely had absolutely no idea what they're going right. to say. It was just like, he said that, and she said that, and he said that. Um, and then I got to the end of the film, end of the script, and I was like, oh, it's that. <laughs> but it was also lots and lots of other things. So Bus Stop is about loss. It's about relationships. It's about relationships with fathers. It's about disappointment. It's about hope. Very much more about hope than seeing him. Which seeing him has, no, has spoiler, no hope whatsoever at the end of that film. <laughs> it's not a laugh in it. Um, and there's no hope. 
it's awful. Um, but bus stop, I think, as a as a sort of like parallel of my own emotional journey, does have that hope. And it's very much about the importance of remaining connected with human beings. Ironically, at this point in time, mm -hmm. it seems to have resonated very strongly with people. So, and then small talk. I just was very struck by the amount of suffering there is amongst people with their mental health and particularly the statistics for men um, not getting the help they need and often sadly committing suicide um, uh, really uh, upset me. And I, I've known of a few people who had lost people to suicide. And so small talk just came from that. That was a very um, deliberate um, script that I wanted to write to mm -hmm. Um, just open up the conversation. And again, it's not one of those suicide films. Yeah. No one dies in it. It's not on the nose. It's not even really about, but it, it just dances. It's just two men having a conversation and it dances around the, the, the issues. And yeah, it's just two guys having a conversation because we felt as a team, that's really what needs to happen is men talking a lot yeah. more. Um, so that came from that, and the long walk home. I wanted to make, I wanted to direct something I wasn't in that was big, that wasn't just two people having a conversation. So that's where that came. From. Cool, yeah. excellent. Um, I do want to talk about bus stop and small talk a little bit more um, in, in, a, in, a, in a minute. Um, I just want to uh, just just uh, sticking with the, the the writing side of things at the moment because I was I was going to go into bus stop and then you went into small talk. I was like, no, 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 it's not a problem. It's just uh, I, I'm um, I think it's important to to talk about the mental health thing. So I yeah. think you know rather than sort of just give it a half-hearted thing, we'll mm. we'll come to that and we'll um, we'll discuss that a little bit more. Um, what's your writing process? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, where, where do, you get, do you write every day? No. No, okay. I don't. No. No. Um. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, the teacher's coming out. It's, yeah, no, that's right. You, um, it's really... So I read... I started to try and read some books about how to write. And it's a bit okay. like reading books about how to act. Okay. <laughs> Like if you read 10 books, they'll all tell you 10 different things. So I find that ideas pop into my head when I'm driving in the car, particularly if I'm listening to music, that will often inspire me. If I haven't got an actual thing I want to write about, like small talk, um, then sometimes, well, often music um, will, I mean, oh, that's a soundtrack to that. <laughs> that scenario. Um but in terms of the writing process, uh, basically writing is a really uncomfortable process. And I think the important thing to be able to push through is writing rubbish. And I write a lot of rubbish, okay. you know, awful dialogue, lots of exposition, blah, all of that bad stuff that then just has to go out the window. So I think give yourself permission to write rubbish. That's why it's called a vomit draft. It's official. The first one's going to be vomit. It's <laughs> That's fine. Okay. has spoken. <laughs> Every writer ever has spoken. And then there's <laughs> the other thing of kill your darlings. So there's the vomit draft and kill your darlings. And those are like two things that are a classic for a reason, because that part, two parts of the process that are painful. No one wants to cut their script. Cut your script. <laughs> There's always something you can cut. There's always a character. There's just like, you have to be brutal. So for me, I suppose the basic writing process is allow myself to write rubbish and then be really brutal with it and cut it down to the bare bones, okay. it, which is painful. And I no one you ever... end up with two characters. <laughs> <laughs> and something really easy to fund, yeah. <laughs> No, exactly. Oh. I've done, you know, I've done a bit of um, like working with other writers with their scripts and stuff like that. And um, you know, they always they they often think there's nothing that can be cut from their script to because no one will understand it. Mm. And I think part of the reason I know you can cut from the script is because I know that actors don't need words. 
They just mm. don't. They're a luxury. Mm. Um, only use words when you absolutely have to, and probably don't say what you're wanting to talk about. Say something else. One of the I mean, really that's, nice real, things. that's a big generalization. <laughs> One of the really <laughs> nice things about bus stop was the silences. Because yes. you've, got, you've got that atmosphere. And I've, I've got some pictures I'm going to pop up in a second. Um, but you've got some, you, you've got that, that atmosphere and it, it's just, the, the silences are just, who is he? You know, I mean, what's he, what's he going to do? He gonna and, do? And, and is someone else going to come along? And is there going to be like a, 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 a you know, the, the other guy? Where, I'm, I'm trying not to spoil it for anyone. But where's the other guy? Where's, where, you know, where, what's he got to do with this? And all and the, the very first guy who Rachel walks past, who's, I assume, sitting at another bus stop, uh, he was on his phone or something, and she walked past him, you know, I want my own bus stop. <laughs> and then the other guy comes along. Like, <laughs> well, that's an interesting story. You see, Gareth, who's to the lamppost, he's actually a crowdfund backer. Okay. And so one of his perk was to be in the film. Right. So I had to try and find a way to write him into the film that sort of fitted... Like, is this, you know, we know a woman on her own in a, in a dark lane, well, that's not good. So something's yeah. going to happen, we assume. Of course, it doesn't. Um, so we'll, we'll walk past. <laughs> <laughs> not that one. That's just Gareth. So we, we and Gareth is wonderful. He's be, he's literally in all my films because he's okay. made them happen by, by crowdfunding. Oh, really? And he always chooses the same perks. So I've always got to hide Gareth. in a, So he's my parallel universe. And so... Um, right. He's in seeing him in the cafe. Okay. He's in, um, yeah, so so we're walking past him and then it's not him. And then we walk through that argument. Um, but but you're right. And the, the pauses were so deliberate and and really finely tuned with my editor, who is mm -hmm. absolutely key, who is absolutely key to that um, story working because we did a rough, a rough cut edit of Bus Stop and he sent it back because it, with the process with Chris, he's done all my films and I'm so lucky to have him um, because he's um, a bit off my pay scale, to be frank. <laughs> <laughs> he took out his IMDb, you'll see why. And um, But I love working with him because I basically say, OK, go in and do something with it. And he does it all off script and right. he puts it together and then, we, and then he'll come back with a rough cut. And it's never very rough. And he came back with a rough cut that was really good value for money. Mm -hmm. Lots of back and, you know, lots of night, lovely stuff and yeah. lots of, you know, back and forth. And um, I said to him, do you like this? Do you like this cut? And he said, well, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I should be doing more than just what I want to do. And I said, well, what do you want to do? And he said, I, and we both agreed that actually what we really wanted to do was just stay on that two shot as much as possible yeah. and only move when the dialogue... Let, let me bring it up so that Correct. people can, can see. Um, uh, do, do, do. Okay, there it is. You'll have to excuse my art software. <laughs> but this, this, can you see that image? Yes, I can. Yeah. There it is. With now, Tom that, Martin's lovely lighting. That's yes, absolutely. I mean, that is a fact. That's a, like a, a Kubrick sort of. Image. It's and that's nothing to do with me. That's my, that's the team, and it's like a work of art, isn't it? When you look at it, it's like it's beautiful, and all that rubbish. Yeah. Sixty percent of that rubbish came from my house. <laughs> really? <laughs> my husband. On the right, so I had a wonderful production designer, Jason um, uh, Kelvin. Who basically made it look like an urban oil painting, and the and the, the bus stop isn't a real bus stop. That's a prop bus stop that we hired. That was a large percentage right. of our. Yeah, it's not real. That's why we so we could get it to look exactly how we wanted to with the right. graffiti, the eggs that you can see running down the back. Uh -huh. um, that was all built absolutely precisely to to suit exactly what we needed, and the rubbish is all was all from the tip and my house. And expert, you know, it's all placed in the bin is there deliberately, and we cover wow. stuff up and the litter, the litter's there to hide the um partly to hide the um the rests that the um bus stop is on because obviously right. it's not in, in the pavement. That's incredible. Um, <laughs> the only thing that's real is the lamppost. That is fantastic. And how, Tom, Tom how does it with power the lights. Well, every th our unit base is the youth club behind you. Right. So every time we shot, we had to turn all the lights out. <laughs> um, so there are cables. There are cables running from. But we've got one massive light 
just to the right or left of, it, of the, the lamp post. Uh -huh. So the, the lamp post didn't work, which was great. So all the light that you see is actually coming from a massive HM, whatever you call it. I don't know, HMI, HM something. Okay. HM something. Um, so it's lit with two lights, one big light and then the, the tube light that we put into the bus stop. That's it. And it's a work of art. Tom is amazing at lighting it's stuff. It's incredible. It's beautiful. It's it exactly really is. how I like to work. Less I'm, is more. What I would say is really nice about it as well is that you said you said it's like they're in a in a cage or in a box, didn't you? Mm. I mean, it is literally like you know this this is this is their box yeah. here. You yes. know, it's literally yes. and they're they're each in their own box. Yeah, yeah so exactly. That line down the middle there. Exactly, and so you have the you have the moment at the end, which is so so the cuts we shot we had two takes of every angle every frame right. only two takes so we we there had to be good acting in both of them because yeah. we could only have one i mean <laughs> maybe more than two takes on some of them but there were very very few takes because it we were shooting at night in summer so we had a very right. small it was going to get light really quickly right. so um we shot lots of different angles and then we only we only allowed them to become more intimate uh -huh. um, as as they were softening up yeah. So you get that handshake right at the end now, and you yeah. get that conversation when they suddenly start hearing each other, then you get the close-ups. Right. Um, and so nice. that was really important. Yeah. yeah, that was really important. I wanted and to music, ask you, go on, go on sorry. <laughs> you know, there's no music till right at the end. And probably most people think, oh, there's no music. And then our composer just, you know, yeah. so, yeah, it's sorry, just, carry on. No, 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 it's all right. It, 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 that, that, Add something as well. Having having no music, that silence, it really does create a sense of isolation. And yeah. you know, like there's no. But the handshake. I wanted to ask you about this. Um, okay, I'm just going to show the, the picture, and I'm going to ask you: Was this on purpose? And if it was, how long did it take to get perfect? Or is it just a massive coinky dink that you didn't even realise until I show you this picture, right? Bearing in mind they're in, they're each in their own box, right? This this is this is your space. This this yes. is Rachel's space. This is Liam's space, right? Yes. Yes. Even when they shake hands, they do not inter. You know what's the word? I, I was going to say interfere with each other's space, but that just sounds wrong. Um, they, 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 yeah, they don't. They don't sort of. You know, Rachel's hand doesn't enter his box, and uh -huh. his hand doesn't enter her. That's even worse. You know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to yes. say. I do know what you mean, and I think it's um, it was a great privilege to work with Matthew Dewar, who is an absolutely fantastic ac actor, absolutely fantastic. It was like working with Daniel Day Lewis. I can't I can't overstate it enough. He's insanely, insanely talented, and I think it's on our part. It wasn't it wasn't conscious, but if you look at the body language there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm looking at it, you know, he's leaning in more. Yep. She's still, I, I think it's a subliminal thing that when, you know, I was lucky, we worked really well together. Though we had no rehearsal. We literally just dived into it on the yep. day. That was it. And I think that, um, uh, like, that sort of being on the edge a little bit with, with each other in terms of, I don't know how this person is as an actor, but this works really well in this context context and really listening to each other i think it just worked that, that, that everything about that scenario was reflected in the body language so no it wasn't planned but i think in your head it is planned because it's just how it how it happened i mean that that shot honestly could not be more perfect if you look right no part of him is leaning in but no part of him yeah is crossing that line even his hand yeah, is I, on I the line. Not noticed, i've not noticed that i'm so pleased that you pick that up I'm, it is very, I'm very observant <laughs> but I, think, I think that is just fantastic and I, I love I, I love I love the the the, the, the symmetry you know mm. well that is deliberate I mean that is yeah. deliberate yes yeah. um, and and also the, you know that you, you may or may not have noticed that at the beginning of the film he's lit more darkly <laughs> and then towards and then he as he moves across his face becomes uh -huh. more visible so he becomes less threatening yeah. um, and that again that was a conversation that we had with Ash who was the first AD um, and also one of the producers and um, Tom 
as well. And also because we had Chris, our editor on set, he was so intimately acquainted with all of the shots. He would have had the whole thing cut in his head by the end of the shoot. I mean, because I know how he works. Right. <laughs> so, but he was cutting it. He was cutting it in the unit base right. while we were filming it, which is what he tends to do. So, yeah, so he can tell us if we've missed anything, you see. Um, That's fantastic. <laughs> do you storyboard yeah. as well? Or no, you just never. Set? No, can't stand them. It's, okay. And I, get, I can't because, because well, here, here's one reason why. We got down there, and if I'd have storyboarded it the way that we planned, you know, we did a recce, and uh -huh. we have a shot list. We have a very detailed shot list. Um, but there was a massive recovery truck but, uh, parked exactly where we thought we were going to put the camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'd storyboarded like, oh, yeah, it's got to be, and, you know, and that's where our extras were, that's where Gareth was going to walk past there. He wasn't going to be in the alleyway at all. So right. I had to, I, I'm always rewriting on set. I'm always rewriting as well when things go wrong, because they always go mm -hmm. wrong, you know. Um, so now I don't, I, as I've only story, so I, storyboarded for the commercial I shot because you have to show it to the client. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you just go, no, it's going to be fine. Oh, it's in my head. <laughs> Trust me. Head. <laughs> Trust me. There might be a removal van on set. <laughs> Something, but we'll work around that. Um, but now I, I um, and I'm lucky that um, Tom, my DP, um, doesn't mind, you know, actually likes working very organically and we trust each other to, like, you know, find a good solution. So uh -huh. I don't storyboard, no. Okay, so you, so how do, how do you decide between you what the shot's going to look like and who has the final word? Yeah, uh, well, I have the final word only in that I'm the director, but it's pretty meaningless in that um, what I will say to Tom is it needs to feel like this. Right. Because I don't know the shots because I'm not a DP. I don't yeah. have all the 600 million references in my head. And I know all the lenses. I know no lenses. <laughs> um, but I know how it needs to feel. Right. So I will say to him, you know, he'll, and then he'll show me something on, you know, this is how it looks with that lens. He's got this app. And he'll go, this is how it looks with that lens on a on a Ari Alexa. That's a 35. That's a blah, 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 whatever. Animal thing, blah, blah, blah whatever. Um, and I'm like, yeah, that's 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 what I mean. And right. then we'll and we'll talk about tone. So he'll know going into the film what feel. And we'll have looked at other films together and reference okay. point. So he knows roughly, we know roughly what we're making. Right. I I don't tell him how to shoot it in down to the nth degree, right. but I will yeah. I will say, you know, we need this range of shots because I reckon we might that's going to feel like a wide probably, but we'll have all the other shots because that's safety. Uh -huh. um, and then, for example, in the commercial that I shot, I had Chris again on set for that. And he actually, um, if you watch the commercial, but there's a, there's a, look at me being a director. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a push, there's a push in on, onto the drummer. And that's actually the editor's shot. And he said, and he was cutting it as we were shooting it. It's a two day shoot. And he said, I think it'd be really nice if we had something really dynamic, just pushing in. And it was such a great idea. It was a bit stupid of me not to have come up with that. Um, and so we shot it on the on the day and, and it's one of the best shots in the whole commercial. Thank so you. it's it's a collaborative thing, you know, and often like in the long walk home, um, we were shooting the nightclub scene, which is the bit where it's all pink and purple and that gorgeous, the gorgeous and extremely talented Betty Denville dancing in a sequence. And... Um, <laughs> It all looks amazing, and Jason. The it was in the church, design. apparently. I, I watched the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As was as was the coffee commercial. Um, okay. As was small as was small talk. We're, we're very good at using one space for everything and making it look Absolutely. different. Absolutely, it's just good. <laughs> and um, and uh, so again, the, the you know, Jason said to me, "There's this bit that I made that looks really nice, and it's not been in shot yet." And I'm like, "Okay, well, let's." let's <laughs> Right, he was absolutely right. Mom, and Tom, Mom, so, can we yeah. use this? <laughs> yeah, no, it was like, it was like I made this and you loved it, but you haven't got it in shot yet because Tom and I were concentrating on Betty and and lights and stuff, and he was absolutely right to make us swing the camera around and get it because it's just it's a beautiful angle. Yeah. So that's that. So it's 
it's very much a collaborative thing. And I and I think my team always feel that they can come out to me and say, you haven't got my props yet, shot. <laughs> 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 that's good, that's good. So you're you're happy for anyone to if if you're if you're doing a shot and someone comes up with an idea, you're happy for them to, to oh, yeah. offer yeah, it and then yeah, you decide whether or not. Yeah, if it's better than my idea, we'll use it. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's the best thing for the film. So yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone serves the story. That's that's what it's all about. Yeah. Just on on the writing, when you uh, you say you don't write every day, um, I'll just just one more thing with it. Do you ever get writer's block? And what do yeah. you do? What do you do when you've got writer's block? Um, well, I've got writer's block at the moment. I'm writing a feature. Um, well, actually, I'm writing three features all at the same time because I can't decide which one I really like. Right. Um, so it, in some ways, what I do is I keep writing. And then if it's just not working, I'm like, you know, this is just not... I'm not excited about this, so let's just shelve that for a bit. Um, but if it's something I know, the one I'm leaning towards, um, I know that it will work, but I can't find the way. I'll just, I'll just leave it. I'll just let it go to bed for a bit, and I'll, and then I'll, I'll walk around and I'll. What I do is I just put some characters together and I let them have a conversation in my head. That's my justification for what's happening. <laughs> It's characters in my head. And um, and I let them have these conversations. And sometimes an idea comes from that. And sometimes an idea comes from watching other people's work. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't like to I do I love watching other people's work, but I don't I think sometimes, you know, I'm then in danger of copying somebody and I don't want to copy it. I want it it needs to be me. So I, I'm a bit wary of that. Mm -hmm. But um I think you just have to, different people have different ways of dealing with it. I leave it alone and then come back with it or I wander around and and let the characters tell me what I think they might want to do, which sounds yeah. really pretentious. No, no, no. It's, 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 I think but it it's exactly what, yeah. it's what happens. It's what yeah. happened with Bugstop. And it, it is what happens. And I do think it's a legitimate writing process. Uh -huh. Yeah, to help no, yeah. get through. Absolutely, you, yeah. I mean, it, uh, there's not, I don't know what I can add to that. It's just, it's just it, it makes complete sense to me. You don't hear voices; you hear entire conversations. It's, we do. It's, it's how yeah. it is. We do that as actors, don't we? Yeah. We, you know, I mean, how often we'd never admit it, but we we stand in the room and we we have we do whole scenes, right? I mean, I do, I know I do. I'm like, oh, you know, I've done Oscar speeches, right? Yeah. We've all done that, and you know, we have whole we do and we do it, and I think that's part of a process. You know, I talked to my. I'll have conversations in the car when I'm driving, you know, I'll act out a scene I think might, might work. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's like I've, I've always, as I've always said, um, since I got into acting, I, I felt that as an actor, I've never been alone because there's always something going on in there to occupy, you know, and I, I've never had a chance to feel lonely, you know. Mm. There's always something going on. Um Okie dokie, do do do. Uh, so you've okay. Small talk. What is small talk all about? Uh, small talk is about uh, two men who find themselves in a room. Both of them are having what I will describe generically as a bad day, but it's more than a bad day. And um, I was talking to my actors about why they came on board to to do it. And, and basically what they liked was the idea that it's a narrative story, it's a drama, it's a narrative story, which throws a positive light on how men can help each other just by having a very low key conversation. It's not one of those, I'll tell you, so I'll tell you why it came about, one of the reasons it came about when I was, it was on my 17th birthday, and I live, like I said, I, we lived in Bristol and um, my dad took me out driving because that's what you do on your 17th birthday. You, you whack the L plate on the back and you go for a really dangerous drive uh, with no, no uh, you know, manual <laughs> drive or anything like that or whatever it's called. Um, dual controls. Dual control, yeah. Dual controls. And uh, we went up to the suspension bridge and we were walking across the suspension bridge and I was dawdling along, you know, probably with a story in my head. And my parents were further ahead and um, and I think she must have been a student looking back on it now. Probably, she was probably about 19 or 20, thinking back on it. And I was stood, 
probably 10, 15 feet away from her. And I thought she was looking at the view and she had a bag and she put the bag down on the floor and she leaned over the edge of the bridge and she just kept going and she disappeared. And it, I, I can't tell you the shift that that makes in a person when you see someone make that choice mm. to end their life and you are so close to them um, that you could have reached out and touched them or you felt you could have said something to them had you known that's what they were going to do. Um, and for about 10 years, I couldn't go anywhere near the bridge. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't drive over it. I couldn't drive under it. I couldn't walk across it. It, it profoundly um, ups, upset me to see someone take that decision to destroy themselves. Um, it was just devastating. And, um, and then fast forward all these years, and it still it still stayed with me. And then I and then you know, I started looking at or picking up statistics about you know mental health became more um, uh, uh, more on 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 the agenda, sort of out on the on the you know on on people's people were talking about minds and hearts yeah. and yeah conversations. And it became aware that particularly there's a very high level of success with suicide attempts with men because they're more decisive about it um, and more suicides in men and the and I was looking at the age ranges and stuff like that and I and I thought I wondered if some of the suicides among women are prevented because we are better at talking we will talk to a counsellor we will talk to a friend and maybe some of those suicides are prevented because of that. I think there's less of a um, stigma as well uh, for women to talk about because women traditionally are yeah. more in touch with their feelings, you know, whether rightly or wrongly, that's the way that they're viewed. So they're yeah. expected to talk about things. They're brought yeah. up as children. It's okay to that's talk about right. it, whereas boys are brought up, you yeah. know, um, just you know you trip over get up get on with it sort of thing yes exactly sort of stiff up a lip and man up and all of that sort yeah. of things so when i when i showed the script to um i showed it to james first who plays adam in it and he really liked the idea that it it's just a conversation but it's two men helping each other mm. through a moment in the day that could have escalated for both of them but doesn't, and and it's a very I. It's not, it's not on the nose. No one, no one says, "Oh, are you struggling?" It's not even. It well, maybe a little bit, but not really. It's just a very awkward to begin with. In fact, it's it's a completely one sided conversation. Spoiler that there's only one, only one guy says anything in this. Right. Um, it's that just must him. Be difficult to write. Well, it was. <laughs> it wasn't actually that. Well, again, this got rewritten because of because of COVID. So it was right. originally written to be on a footbridge, um, and we start we shot it, and then we had an incident on set which shut the shut the um, set down, and right. um, that went that went to court. <laughs> and that, so that was the guy. Was it the uh, the hooligan? That was the guy that thing? yeah. Came onto set and smashed all our equipment. How can you do that when you, you've got you've got all those people around? What sort of mentality do you have to have to do that for no reason? Uh, well, I don't know how much I can say, but he it wasn't he he was known to the police, right. so it, he wasn't just a random passerby. Okay. <laughs> Exception to our, I mean, and you know, and and because of the nature of of the assault, we did we basically called. He was quite volatile. Um, uh, so uh, I rewrote it to be able to shoot it inside COVID safe. So we, we changed the scenario from being a bridge, someone talking to someone on a bridge to being in an office. And, um, and that was, and, and actually we all, we all said at the end of it, you know, that I, I said to James, oh, I, I, I'm really sad about losing the bridge because it looked beautiful at night and the production value was gorgeous and there was something very raw and the sound of the river, you know, the threat and the river looks dark and all of that because I always think of um, locations as a character, very yeah. much a character and in, 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 that adds something to the um, story. 
And then we were like going into an office, which wasn't, you know, it wasn't particularly interesting. But we all felt we got a better script by the end of it, actually, from having to make those changes. And he said he just really liked the fact that it was a normal, it was just a normal conversation that could happen. And he yeah. and we really hope that people will watch it and go, yeah, I, that that's manageable, that. That is manageable oh, yeah. to to connect, and they are fantastic actors. So the reason it works is because those guys. That it's like, you know, they're award winning performances that they both give. It, right. Especially, you know, it will not especially both. But Jake equally, Joseph Prowen, who plays Jake, who says nothing but says everything. I mean, hmm. he's incredible. And so again, it's down to the casting. And James yeah. went completely off script. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. Oh my Good lad. He's like, so Chris and I, when we were editing, we're like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Good <laughs> lad. Good lad. Go with the moment. And it, which I'm really happy about because he was kind of like talking from his heart. And so we cut out the bits that didn't work and we kept the bits that did. Um and and I loved I loved that. I, I loved it. Fantastic. Um so yeah. I don't know what question I answered then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, that was uh, what, what was what I asked what it was about. Um, the is um, oh uh, when when you changed the location um, mm. from the bridge to the office, did it? Obviously, on the bridge there is a sense of impending doom because mm. at any moment that guy yeah, could exactly. just no, I'm, I'm off. Where, yeah. So there's a sense of urgency to the other character to, to talk yeah. them down. That when bit you, was hard. Yeah. Did, Changing what, it to an office it, where there's no... A, there's a stapler. <laughs> you <laughs> you might fall on his bio. I know, not meaning to be flippant. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, that was... Yes. So then it was about... It was just about seeing that this guy was at his wit's end and knowing that that could be, and, and I just had to lose. That was the bit, I was like, oh, it won't work now. Mm. <laughs> and I thought, well, A, we've been funded, so it has to work because we've got to make this. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we very kindly got a grant from Genera Films as well. Thank you, Genera Films. Shout out to them, they're amazing. Okay. Um, we'll put, put a link on the, at the yeah, end. Yeah, Genera, Genera Films, it's a, a great funding, funding um, uh, access to funding there. And um, so I had to, again, it's like this thing that you talk to talk to writers about, you know, most writers say, well, it won't work now because he's not about to jump. Yeah. Like, okay, so you have to make this work. That's what writing is. You have to make it work. Yeah. So I had to make it work. And that was basically by um, just thinking, putting this guy in a, in a room where he'd gone to have time alone. And, and I suppose... It's just about managing that moment so that it doesn't escalate in the future. It could, and holding I mean, out friendship, male yeah. friendship. It also, I mean, there, there is still a sense, there can still be a sense of impending doom in so much as if the, act, the, the actor has, instead of having the, the physical thing there where, you know, the audience can see, the, you know, he, he, might, he might just go over the edge the actor's performance needs to be so intense that mm. you know if he walks out that door it will have the same effect on the audience as watching him topple off the side yeah yeah so, yeah i mean so that gives the other actor the the, the impetus um the 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 uh need to keep them there and keep them talking and try to yeah. break through yes exactly and you know it's a film and it's I don't know, whatever it is, eight minutes. It's not about, this is how you stop someone killing themselves because it's not that. No. It's not, it's, I mean, it, it, on one level it is because, you know, the Samaritans whose, guide, whose guidelines I looked at before I wrote the script, they do say, just start having a conversation with them. But what you don't do is go, oh, are you about to, you know, there, there are guidelines that they say, this is, this is a good way to distract someone from... Mm what their what their what their tu their tunnel vision at this point in time their their whole world looks like this so trying to break them out of that yeah. is is what they recommend for people who find themselves in that situation with someone on a bridge for example so i wanted to take that advice 
and make it work in this context. And that that was what I felt would would be, um, you know, appropriate, responsible, um, because you have to make sure you're 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 not like, making up your own thing about what could you know what you do and what can happen. Mm. That's yeah. that's unhelpful. Um, whilst also obviously realizing it's a drama, so it's a bal- it's a balancing act. Um, and then very much handing it over to your actors and saying, right, you you know, yeah. I know you're amazing, so let's let's make this work. Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> sell my yeah, film that. That was, yeah 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 no so yeah it's, it was exciting to watch them bring it to life um Ooh. and it very very moving mm. do you do you think do you think that you so you, you wrote it and directed it yeah yes do you feel that, who, who do you think had the most the heaviest weight on their shoulders in order to um to 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 give a sensible real yet yeah, I, I don't i don't mean entertaining but you know a, a, yeah. a entertaining yeah. um look at <clears throat> male mental health and potential suicide was it was it you as the writer you as the director or was it your actors i think it's a partnership i hope it's a partnership it should right. be the responsibility if it doesn't work is mine because right. it's I'm in charge. Um, when it does work, it's a partnership. <laughs> um, You're my sort of so director. I, <laughs> it's, true. it's true. If it doesn't work, it's my, it's, you know, it's, it may, might not be my fault, but it's my responsibility. Right. Um, uh, because I make all the decisions that are all part of the equation on, mm. on, the, on the day. Um, how I tend to direct is by this was a this was a this was a weird a weird shoot because if you watched it you wouldn't go and, and you you would say to people which do you think was her first film bus stop or small talk they'd all say small talk okay. because it's very much it's more raw it's it hasn't got it's not um not got that urban gloss <laughs> it's yeah because part made a lot of it was because we were shooting in, under COVID restrictions okay. so everything was super everyone was super like <clears throat> um you know and there was like um you know wiping every like your half most of your brain is like did i sanitize that like <laughs> you're thinking about all the things that aren't really <laughs> to, anything to do with filmmaking so everyone was like hyper elevated in terms of that and then of course what happens on the day is we we thought we were shooting in one room and we got there and we were like there's not enough ventilation <laughs> so all the lighting had been and we want a very tight budget a very tight budget so we had enough lighting for this particular room which was half the size of right. the room we ended up shooting in which was also all windows which was great because we because is, is you you'll notice every film ever that's filmed under lockdown has all the windows <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's got all the windows open. It's got loads of light, which is a nightmare if you haven't brought the right lighting with you uh-huh. to work against that. So we were up against basically not brilliant lighting for the scenes um, and having to be really quick because everyone, you know, and not being able, and everything takes, having to be really quick, but everything takes three times the time because you haven't got everyone on set that you'd like to. Yeah. Um, no makeup artist allowed on, no hair, no continuity, no production designer, <laughs> like all of these, no, um, yeah, like all the things that make life really easy <laughs> aren't there. Uh-huh. And so I'm thinking, I, you know, everyone's doing five jobs. So yeah. I'm, the, the almost the last thing I'm looking at is, are the actors giving a good performance or is are they in shot? You're right. just thinking, Am I too close to you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mask over my nose, <laughs> all of that stuff. Um, so I'm making it sound like it's a mess. It's not. It's just a very different film, and it's uh-huh. all handheld, so it's very intimate. It's um, it's all but it's shot on a beautiful camera. It's a mini LF, which is what Roger Deakins shot. Um, Nineteen seventeen, eighteen. Okay. <laughs> 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 George, George Mackay. Um, 
So that's what that's the camera they used for that. It's a really lovely camera. There's nothing right. wrong with that production value. It just has a very different feel to it. And there's no production designer, so you know it's me chucking stuff around the set. Um, uh, I can't remember what I'm actually meant to be talking about. Oh, so who's in charge? Uh, so the collaboration. Like, so yeah. who, who so would... as, a, as a director, I basically go in and I try and leave my actors alone. Right. Because they're good actors. They know what they're doing. The only time I tend to step in, really, is for technical reasons. Like, okay. your head's out of shot. It's not your fault. We haven't got enough room. Right. So can you just be aware that you need to move? You know, that that's it. I'm not okay. going to be messing about with their performances. Because right. if they can't do the part, I shouldn't have cast them. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, it's usually just technical stuff. I will right. step in. With um, both Small Talk and Bus Stop are both films, um, they're two-handers, and it's all conversation. Bus Stop's three, but you don't move. Well, four. yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, for, the, for the majority, yeah. the main story, yeah. uh, uh, technically, Bus Stop was four. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so when you're, get, when you're filming those conversations, do you ask the actors to learn to learn the whole script like a play and then do uh, one long take or do you specific, purposefully say we're going to do one page and then we're going to cut uh, so they knew they knew they knew the whole they could have done the whole thing in one in one go with bus stop we sh we did i think we sort of kept just sh shooting the whole thing because it was so short um we shot the whole conversation from multiple angles. Right. Um, that just made sense to me. So it was, it's a bit luxurious, but I didn't really know when, where we were gonna, I didn't know how I was gonna cut it mm -hmm. exactly. And I wanted to make sure that I had enough options. So we shot the whole thing. We just shot the whole thing over and over and over again, which was a lot of crying. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we shot um, things like, we did some particular close-ups um, as, se as separate shots. And with Small Talk, um, we, didn't, we didn't do all of it all together because it was more moving around, but we did do large chunks because the camera was very fluid. Right. Um, but they're very skilled actors and actually James and Joe, Joe and Matthew are also theatre actors. So they have that magical like mm. ability to learn Shakespeare. Yeah. Otherwise I'm like, oh, that's four lines in a row. I'm going to need to cut that. <laughs> 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 what do you mean I need to know all of this? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to do something wrong, so we cut. Yeah, so so we did do long long chunks. <laughs> that's cool. That's, that's yeah, because I, ju I just thought with it, with it being, um, you know, so did you, uh, so do you only use one camera? Do you prefer to operate with one camera? Well, that's a budget thing, really. Right. Um, uh, wouldn't it be nice to have two cameras? Uh, so, 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 so far, it's just been one camera. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. But, but, but actually, I think it's, you know, it's more to do with the DP. It's all, but you could have six cameras and a uh -huh. rubbish rubbish camera operators, and that's like, what's the point of that? Yeah, so absolutely. I think the thing that tells the story is, is the DP having that that storytelling eye? But yeah, we're we're limited with with budget. You're limited to. I was just thinking, one. if you had two cameras, you could have um, you know, it would it would reduce the amount of t of uh, times you need Absolutely. to. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah, and with bus stop, that would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> As the light was, you know, encroaching on our set. <laughs> did, did you have any um, traffic passing by? Because I know there were sounds of traffic. And I was wondering if they were put on in the edit because nothing passed in front of me. It's a lovely shot. I was just, was the camera in the middle of the road? Was it on the other side of the road? I mean, it was on the other side of, of the road um, in front of the re recovery truck yeah. <laughs> um, for the wider shots and then like slap bang in front of us for the um, either side of the bus stop for the, for the reverses and, and you know, mids and close-ups and all of that. But there was a lot of there was a lot of traffic at the beginning of the night, which I we weren't expecting. But it was it was supposed to be a quiet road. It was actually the road I used to live in, right. and it was actually the road that my parents came to live. Uh, long long story, but they both ended up living with um, us. And my dad had uh, cancer and died in 
our home, which was wow. just around the corner, which was kind of, so just sort of in the corner of my eye. And wow. my mum also died in the same house, weirdly. Um, and so that was deliberate because I knew that that would keep me on edge. Hmm. Um, but we, I'd never known so much traffic when I had been in that house. <laughs> and then there must have been some party going on. So it was the first time I'd worked with Simon Horner, our amazing, amazing, amazing sound recordist. And he turned up to it was like the spaghetti junction. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, here's, here's an exclusive for people who are watching. I actually, I don't know if I've told any of my team this, my husband knows. He, he, I was so nervous because it was my first time directing. I was in it. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I knew everyone else knew what they were doing. And the pressure, I felt so bad because Simon turned up and he's so calm. He comes with like a world of sound equipment. He can deal with anything and everything. Um, but there was just so much traffic. And he's like, my dear, I don't know this. My dear, it's fine. It's fine, my dear. And I thought, no, it's not fine. It's not fine. And I, t I turned around and said, that's great. I turned around, I went into the toilets and I burst into tears. I Aww. stood in that, I stood in that toilet cubicle, pre-makeup. <laughs> 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 and I was like, I'm, I ruined it. This is just a nightmare. How can I possibly put my team through this? And then I gave myself a talking to, I came out of the toilets. <laughs> my husband was like, you're right. Like, no! Because <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was a location manager. And um, uh, he gave me a hug. I was like, right, you just get a grip, Vanessa. This, this is not how it works. Get out there, make, make the film. And Simon was amazing. And, the, and we, did, we did get... So you're, a lot of the pauses are also Matthew and I expertly trying to manage to work our way around a car without affecting the, the authenticity of the performance. There was a lot no. of that. No, it, um, was, it was good. It was good. But, but Chris, Chris Fifth, our editor, was quite excited because you'll notice there's a wipe at the end. You know, he does this right. beautiful wipe. And he's like, oh, that's great, great production value. I'm like, yeah, it's great production value, but the sound is <laughs> like, no, no, no. Everyone was just encouraging me. But, um, yeah, the sound was was um, was definitely, Simon did a great job. And I, I'm pretty sure all the car noises, just the car noises in there. Okay, Apart from it was, it was the police good. siren. The police, the police siren obviously isn't. Yeah. Um, and I say that, I think we did balance, I think we did fill in some ambient noise as well, and probably, um, yeah, taking some credit away from our, our sound design person. Um, but yeah, it was a challenge. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was really, really nice to watch. It really was. 